You know, I uh, when I came out here to California in 1954 from Arkansas, uh, in Arkansas there were some two things they had there, boxing and wrestling. And so I was an amateur boxer. I fought uh, uh, um, uh, uh, in, in uh, some, some uh, you know, uh, uh, bootleg fights. And then when I went to college, I joined a boxing team. Wow. And, uh, and 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 so I was a member of the boxing team. They had the program for one year, and then they terminated. So I went over to the National Guard. They had a, a team there because they had a lot of boxing clubs all over uh, Arkansas. Because every year, nineteen, uh, every year uh, for I don't know how many years before, they had an annual AAU tournament. They brought in all the fighters from all over the state, and they win the, when they win that tournament, they go to the nationals in Boston National AAU. And uh, and that's where they weed out the the weak from the strong, and uh, and then anyway, I, I had about twenty five formal fights, and I won eighteen of my knockouts, and I had a left. That's all I had, but I knew how to use it five different ways, and um, and just kind of developed it along the way because being Asian in in Arkansas. Uh, and back in the 30s, 40s, and 50s, you got picked on a lot. And a lot of my cousins quit going to school because they got picked on. <clears throat> For some reason, I stayed with it and fought back. And I got in two fights every couple of weeks. And uh, and so I uh, kind of, uh, you know, developed my edge that way. And then, then formally, uh, I, I had a book by Barney Ross, 12 years old. I read it, and I practiced what I understood was in there. And uh, he was one of middleweight champions back in the 30s. And one world uh, middleweight champion. When I went off to college and I got my first formal boxing instructions from a uh, guy who was uh, our army champion in World War II. And he was going to school there and he wanted to start a boxing team. So after he left college, the boxing team didn't have a coach, so they, they disbanded it. And and then, so anyway, I, I was in the ministry. I studied the theology at Southern Methodist University uh, after I graduated from college in Arkansas. And uh, I came out here to California, Sacramento. And and uh, so I started seeing signs. Before, you didn't even know what the word karate was. But there were signs jujitsu. Uh, one of Bruce Tegner's, uh, uh, he used to write a lot of books, and he was a father of uh, Ventura, California. And uh, so I saw the sign Jiu-Jitsu, so I stopped my car and went upstairs, and there was a Dallas and Londa dance studio, but the guy who was teaching dancing was also a student of of, uh, 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 of Jiu-Jitsu. So, um, so I asked him, you know, I never, I didn't know what Jiu-Jitsu was. I, I used to read a book about it. And so I actually took Jiu-Jitsu from him for about a year. And and by then, six months into the in the program, I was able to pin him and, and, and not really, really <laughs> beat him, you know. But I stayed with him because he was a nice guy. And finally, he told me he's going to move to Southern California. So then I went over to the YMCA, and there I, I got into the judo program there. And got up to a green belt, and uh, and that guy's name was Bob Bendix, and he hung around with uh, Ben Camel and and Walt Harris, uh, and Walt Harris was an Olympic champion, and uh, so I trained with him for a while, and but but all along, my boxing survived all these things. Uh, one night I remember he. But the old ladies came, they supported the YMCA program. So they came and just visited see what's going on. And so they came to the judo program. So he was going to demonstrate to them what judo was about. So he said, hey, Fong, throw a punch. I shot a left jab out there, and he reached out, and there was nothing there to reach. <laughs> so he got, and he says, God damn it, don't you know how to throw a punch? I said, well, Bob, how do you throw a punch? So he throws a left jab out there and hang, let it hang. So I said, oh, that's what you want. So I throw it out and let it hang. He grabbed my arm, got in and threw me a, threw a, a hip throw and slammed me into the bat. So I stopped the mat like I, I was practicing to break the fall and got up. It was okay, you know. And then right there, I said to myself, I said, wait a minute. The key to beating a, a, a judo guy is to keep distance and stick him with the stick and move. And so I learned early how to use boxing to defend against uh, judo and jujitsu. And, uh, 
course, uh, you know, a couple of years later, I quit and le- left the program. And I wrestled a little bit because there was a guy named Frank Lawrence who used to wrestle at San Jose State University, asked me to come and join the wrestling program. So I, I learned a few moves in the wrestling. and But always my heart was in boxing. I was a stand-up guy and keep distance. And so I heard there was a Korean guy at the Sacramento State University and uh, and. Uh, and and I looked him up and found out he was a Taekwondo guy trained under Quan Pi. And and so he started coming to my church in the social hall during the week and trained me and a couple of firemen. So it's about three or four of us. Uh, I paid him and, and he'd come over and, and train us. Then after two years, he uh, he decided to go to um, go back to Korea. Hmm. And uh, and so one day I, I got this letter and it was, in, it was a first degree black belt, the certificate. He promoted me to first degree black belt, and um, and then uh, and then I decided. Well, that's 1958. I decided to go to uh, 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 San Francisco and look around and see if I can find a kung fu school. And so I saw an old man standing on the corner, uh, uh, and I said, uh, uh, said to him, uh, you know, is there any kung fu schools around? He said, Yeah, there's two. There's one up there by the church and one down here by the basement near the park. And I said, which one is best? He said, well, the guy by the park is an old guy. And one guy upstairs is a little younger. So I said, well, maybe an old man would uh, would be better. So I went down to that basement uh, thing, and and I met a guy named Bung, uh, Low Bun, which is Charlie Fudmaster. And I told him he wanted to know how, how, what I want to do, why I want to learn Kung Fu and all that. And then so I used to drive from uh, Sacramento to San Francisco, which was about an hour and a half drive, uh, every week. And I trained with him for about three years and uh, in Charlie Fudd. And then I said, well, I'm going to go up there and see that young guy that he was talking about that I missed. So I went up there by the Baptist Church and uh, and went in, and, and there was uh, T.Y. Wong, Professor T.Y. Wong. He was in his 50s, and he was smoking a cigarette. And so I went and talked to him and asked him about his program. He said, and he just got explained to me. And then there was a guy doing forms in front of the uh, the mirror with um, weights. And he turns and looks and he says, he came and walked over to me and said, my name is Jimmy Lee. He said, are you necessary to go fool? I said, yeah, I trained at the toilet for school. So he said, well, why don't you join us? You know, and I said, well, I tried. And so I was going over there and coming and going to the Silum, and it turned out it was Silum Kung Fu. And so I, I developed a friendship with Jimmy, uh, you know, because he comes in on Friday night and trained in the hardly anybody there. And uh, then he had, uh, and then he he uh, he helped write a book on Silum Kung Fu, and 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 then uh, uh, so I, I got a copy of it. He gave me a copy. And I still have it. And 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 then he said one day uh, after a few months there, and he said, "Hey Leo, I'm gonna get out of here." I said, "Why?" He said, I'm, uh, "A guy accused me of cheating my ten dollars from these books." And they said, "Screw him! I'm gonna go start my own class in my garage and you know uh, in my house." He said, "If you don't come along, you're welcome." I said, "Yeah, I'll go with you." So I left with him, and it wasn't too long there. He says, "Hey, I'm gonna have a young guy come into Wally J's luau." And every year, Wally J would have a luau to raise funds for his island, Pacific Island uh, Judo Club. And uh, and he said, uh, I will have him. Uh, uh, this year, it's going to be a young guy named Bruce Lee. I said, how young is he? He said, 21 years old. I said, uh, uh, 21, what do you know? He said, well, you see, the guy's fantastic. And sure enough, you know, I went to the luau and... And Bruce jumped on the stage and said, anybody want to? Well, first of all, he did a demonstration uh, uh, of all kinds of crazy movements of Kung Fu movement. Mainly, I think it's a northern style Kung Fu. He slapping his leg and, his, and stuff like that. And then he asked a question to the audience. He said, how the hell do you think you guys could fight with that, with that, those movements? And I looked at all the... Uh, no food masters out there in the audience, and they were all turned red in the face. He said, "It's a it's a classical mess." That's what he said. He said, "Like getting up, trying to fight your way out of a fish net." <laughs> <laughs> so then he said, uh, so, "So he says, so now I'm going to demonstrate what I do." So he called it Chung Chung Kung Fu. And so some he asked for volunteers, and, and nobody you know took up his offers. And finally, some big old football player like guy jumped on the stage, and he said, "You ready?" 
And and he said, so the guy gets in a fighting stance, and boom, he shoots a jab and hit him right on the forehead. <laughs> and then uh, he said, well, and then he said, well, maybe you're not ready. You're ready again? And the guy said, yeah. Boom, he did it again. And, and and touched him, and the guy was trying to block it, just too late. And then he asked a couple of guys to come in and try the same thing, and they all the same thing. And he was so fast. <clears throat> and then anyway, uh, after the, um, the luau, Jimmy said to me, said, we're going to get together on Monday. On Monday, this was, a, I think, a Friday night or Saturday night, I don't remember. And he said, we're going to get Monday in my house. Bruce is staying over the weekend. And you know, we're welcome to come, and we're going to have a little bit of, a, you know, bull session, you know. So I got there, and Baker was there. And then I remember Bob Baker was there and a couple other guys. So we were just rapping there. And Bruce uh, wanted to show up one inch punch at the end. Bob Baker put the... The Oakland uh, phone book, which is real thick, on his chest, and so Bruce, uh, boom, he, he snapped his wrist, and I bet he hit the couch, went over the couch, and, uh, and I was pretty impressed with that. And then, uh, the next day, he mindful, and was doing tra- doing uh, cheese up with uh, with them, uh, with Bob, and moving them all over, the place, slapping them around, and. Uh, but I, I, you know, the thing is, I got thinking about it later, <clears throat> but and then he abandoned all that later as far as uh, it was good demonstration stuff, and then everything changed after uh, uh, his Wong Jongman fight. But he found out that stuff didn't work, and I was the one that told him. I said, you know what I've done, groups? I would have grabbed him by the back of the head, jerked him back, and punched him here, punched him with crosses, uppercuts, and hooks. And he said, yeah, I got to do something, and you know. And that was on telephone. Uh, on telephone, I talked to him, and he told me what happened after the fight. So then I went down the next day, and he went to Wing Chun to what he called later Jit Kune Do. He bouncing all over the place. He had a leather glove hanging from a chain from the ceiling. He was ch- jabbing it, and hooking it, and then bouncing all over the place. I didn't teach him how to box, but I shared my boxing skills with him. And he was one that developed his own skills in boxing. See, see JKD is more boxing than kickboxing than anything else. And But uh, it's not really original. It's that Bruce has had a knack of looking at what you do, and if he likes it, he can regurgitate it and come out, and you can't even tell it's yours. <laughs> you think he... He, that's what he did with Jun Lee. He learned it, how, he learned a spinning back kick from Chuck Norris, and he learned the other kicks from uh, side kicks and high kicks like that from Jun Lee. And because uh, I remember before he met those guys and got to know them, he didn't. Uh, he couldn't. Uh, he only kicked about waist high, the Wing Chun uh, kick, you know, real stiff, just kicking right straight in there. But he was, he made it work fast. And uh, very very good, very athletic, and he very good at innovating things. And that's what he had. And nobody can imitate Bruce Lee. I mean, nobody can be Bruce Lee. They might try to imitate it. He wouldn't have any depth. But that's why I didn't. So Wei Kin Do is an influence of Bruce Lee and boxing. Because the turning point in my life was I was training at different places. Cho Le Fudd, Siu Lam, uh, uh, Do, uh, you know, and all these places. And he said to me one day, he said, hey, how come you go to all so many places? I said, Bruce, I'm looking for the ultimate, man. And one of those arts going to have the ultimate thing that I'm looking for. He said, ain't no ultimate, boy. And he'd take his finger and push it in my, my chest. He said, ultimate's in there. And I said, wow. I thought about it when I drove home. And I said, wait a minute. Every time I got into a fight with somebody, a martial artist, I always end up uh, uh, popping them with a left hook or setting it up with a left jab. I said, I'll just use boxing. I didn't realize I was that far advanced. Uh, in classical martial arts, didn't work against a good boxer, especially if he knew how to stop those kicks and stuff. And, and, and so I got to developing uh, my skills from the theory that I, I share with Bruce Lee and, and, and theory he shared with me, and I call it We Can Do a Way of uh, Integrated Fist. I said, don't accumulate... Uh, and, uh, don't accumulate, don't imitate, integrate. <laughs> wow, that's, nice. that's what we know is. It's is um, it's a personal uh, personal journey of boxing, embracing all these other elements. But uh, like a, what I use as an analogy is like a chicken. 
You know, you don't realize how many different components go in making an egg. If you watch a hen in a in the yard, he's gonna peck here, peck there all day, and then he'll cackle and come out of the eggs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So wow. So it, so anyway, that's that was uh, the beginning, uh, and that's what Waking Doe is all about. And he's really came a long ways. I, I, I see that that uh, name was not given was not made up by me. It was given to me. Uh, I was in Hong Kong, 1974, after Bruce Lee died, and uh, wanted to interview me uh, when the Hong Kong Martial Arts Magazine. And so Chen Chang, who was production manager on Enter the Dragon, uh, uh, was a good friend of mine. So he picked me up from the, from the hotel and said that he had set up an interview with a martial arts magazine in Hong Kong. I still have the cover, I have that magazine, and I got the cover of it. They went out of business, but it's 74. And they did an article on Bruce Lee and then one on me. It's all in Chinese. And... Uh, uh, he said, what's your style of uh, uh, martial arts? I said, I don't know. I said, I've done karate, I've done Chori Fat Kung Fu, Wing Chun Kung Fu, and all these Kung Fu styles, and, and, and wrestling and boxing and jujitsu. He said, what are you doing Wei Kun Do? I said, what's that? He said, Wei means the stomach, and that's where all the food is integrated, and uh, Kun is a fist, and Do is a Wei. Wei Kun Do, Wei is the integrated fist. I said, hey, that's okay. So when the interviewer asked me, he said, what style of martial art do you practice? I said, Wei Kun Do. <laughs> and I got back from Hong Kong in, in 70, uh, late 74. I wrote a book on the psychodynamic of free fighting, Waking Door uh, psycho, uh, Psychodynamic of Free Fighting. And in it, it gave me all the basic stuff that I started to uh, gel in my head. And so I look back at that move, that, that book, it, it, in, it entails uh, hitting, kicking, and grappling. And way before it me. I mean, a lot of people remind me, said, hey, you were forerunner of MMA, but I didn't, you didn't call him MMA. I said, no, I call it We Can Do. And, uh, and uh, so, because we used to work out, and uh, we go from uh, hitting to kicking to grappling. But now I realize I won't get on the ground, because I took uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu for a year from the Machado Brothers, and I just want to feel like what it feels like on, uh, with these guys. And so I, now I come to the conclusion I know how, to, how they're going to get me down to the ground. I, I avoid it, so I keep distance. And I got an acronym called DRAT, D-R-A-T-T. And DRAT, D is distance, R is, um, uh, is relaxed, focus, A is angles, and T is timing, and, and, and T is t- technique, technique and timing. Yeah, right now, you know, I got students, man. They, you know, you can say, well, I can do this, do that. But, uh, and mostly these uh, Bruce Lee wannabes. Everybody's doing what you can do. And they're not too good at it. Huh. Yeah, see? They're just imitating. All they're doing is going around and kicking to the knee and hitting to the uh, finger jab to the eye. All I got to do is turn my head to a half an inch. You're going to miss my eye. And all I got to do is shift my foot and hit you at the same time. Uh, your, your, your knee kick is not going to be effective. Because wow. I feel in waking door now, we fight in angles. I, I don't I jab straight into your face. I jab and my whole body is to the right. And then while my left hand is in your face. Wow. And, and we do it all in one movement. It's not like ping, 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 you know. <laughs> and, and I practice that with a chair. So yeah, I go boom, and then uh, and then with the boxing skills go along with it, you know, it's pretty effective. I'm not saying it's unbeatable, but uh, but you, you gonna get somebody that's got good reflex action, and he's gonna give you a hard time, you know. But but I, but if you come at me with a with a deep kendo uh, approach like all these guys do uh, that that's around the world. They're learning, and they do the same thing. They kick to the knee, jab the eye, jab to the, uh, to the eye. Because uh, uh, there, there's a couple of uh, name, uh, instructors teaching that, thinking it'll work. But they don't realize, uh, in, in my approach, I don't go for compliance. In other words, uh, we free fight. We don't have somebody stand there and just take this is to just become the object of receiving what you throw, and then you go and laugh and say, "Oh man, I can kick everybody's ass," you know? No, 
up a boxer. You know, you you go into uh, yeah, use uh, the boxing. Highest compliment I ever had was in '74, '75 in the Philippines. I fought a guy named Flash Manning. I mean, we were sparring. I was in the gym working out. He was watching. He said, you want to spar with me? And I said, well, you look pretty big. He was 156 pounds. I was only 140. And uh, and uh, he said, well, I used to spar with Archie Moore when he used to come to the Philippines on the way to Australia. And I said, okay, we'll, we'll spar. So I put the gloves on. I held my own against him. He punched me a couple of times in the body, kind of lifted me up a little bit, but I hit him in the face a couple of times too. And finally he says, uh, do what you want to do, and I just want to box you. I said, okay. And so it was no match. As soon as he, put his, he stepped forward, I stepped back, and I swept his leg for a minute and hit him with a left hook. He went down, and he was laughing. He said, man, he said, you look like a boxer, but you ain't. <laughs> Look like a ball grade. I said, hey, Flash, that's the highest compliment I ever got, uh, got from anybody. They don't categorize me and say, hey, you're a boxer. But he said, you're a boxer, but you look like a boxer, but you're not. That's what I wanted. Uh, you know, I don't want to be predictable, see? Yeah. So uh, so that's what uh, where I'm coming from, and, and that's what I teach nowadays. I just way, did, did away with forms. I, I, I used to practice Taekwondo forms. Uh, Chimole Fudge form, Sulam form. And I said, man, I'm so bogged up trying to not forget those things that I do them. Uh, uh, it took me all day to get, get through a workout. <laughs> Some of those Chimole Fudge forms is, is 110 movements. Wow. But it's good for exercise. See, if you pick out one or two and do it consistently, and with weights that you can, uh, with, you know, hand weights, you can, you can probably do pretty good, you know. Yeah. yeah. So um, I was gonna ask you. You you taught Lee, Lee Lolio as well. He's a he's a really good guy, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I you know I I I showed him you know I organized techniques. Uh, 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 you know angles were attack. I got ten techniques in there, and uh, and uh, then I have uh, basically my whole system is based on on angle attack, circle destruction, trapping, and uh, and uh, countering. And footwork, and uh, and so, uh, but I'm now trying to uh, to uh, uh, summarize the whole thing without covering everything without spending a lot of uh, uh, time on 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 a lot of techniques. In other words, boil down to where you only do a few techniques a thousand times rather than a thousand techniques a few times. You know. Yeah. So, but uh, yeah, Lee, uh, you know, he uh, he has a boxing background, and uh, and so so that's why you got a boxing background. Uh, you, you can do well in street sparring, you know, because that's all boxers do. They street sparring. They don't play around. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, ju judging from the picks, you know, um, you're, you're over eighty, right, at the moment. I'm eighty-seven. I will be eighty-seven uh, in November. You know. And you still look like you're in great shape, and you move so well. How do you do that? By never quitting. I, I've been training ever since I, I got the first in the first fight at, in first grade. Oh my yeah. Goodness. Feed chicken. I used to feed two hundred chickens. Well, in Arkansas, we lived in a little town. There's about two eight hundred people. And 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 uh, my parents had a chicken uh, in the background, and uh, and I used to feed those things. I go feed it with corn chops in a big bucket. I would curl the corn chop and stuff before I throw the the, the corn out into the uh, yard for the chicken to go and peck on it. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah, and so and then I, I found some window weights. You know, they used to have little weights in the windows, uh, in the windows. And you when you push a, the weight up, the weight would pull down and pull the window up. That's the old time uh, time the window uh, weights. And then I found a bunch of those in the yard, and I picked up one of them. They, they weigh about three pounds a piece. So I, I would curl those things and and press with them, and I would get three of them and wear them out. You know.